with the knuckleball of Matt Waldron exceeding everyone's expectations. Are Matt and I buyers or sellers? We're talking Waldron and much more on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at Don Martino FB. Here, as always, with my brother, my co-host, my partner in crime, Matthew Ane, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Ane. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly, truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. And if you're watching on YouTube and haven't already, hit that little bell below and subscribe to the channel and gives you notification every time we drop an episode. And lastly, but most importantly to Matt and I, guys, join us on the subtext platform. It's an in-depth experience personalized to you, catered through text messaging alerts right to your phone, offering so much more than we can in these 30-minute episodes. And you can find the link to our subtext in the bio wherever you're listening or watching or available on any of our social media platforms. Today's episode of Locked on Fantasy Baseball is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Did you know that it's never too late to resolve your tax issues with the IRS? Don't wait, reduce your tax debt, and get help from a team of licensed professionals. Call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. And Matt, we have an action-packed episode for uh, the fans today, but I've done a lot of talking. Why don't you take the wheels here, brother? Well, first off, I want to say welcome back. Um, Thank you. Appreciate happy it. Happy to have it. you. Wasn't able to do it yesterday. Wasn't able to make the show, guys. Sorry, my bad. Um, but yeah, welcome back. Team's all here. We're ready to take this second half of the season going. We're going to get you guys some we championships. Are. And let's start off with a hot trade item. Now let's talk Corey Seager. Uh, I talked about him maybe last week or the week before in the trade for it away, but he's still relevant and he's still a guy that I want to acquire. So I feel like we need to talk about him again, whether I did or not last week. And you know what? It's it's even more relevant than what we're going to talk about now because he's now on a complete slump after coming off the IL for that short little stint. And we all see what he could do when he finally gets in the groove this season, even though he's only played 259 at-bats and missed pretty much a month of baseball and a couple weeks here and there. He still has 14 home runs on the season, 33 runs, 36 uh, ribs, a stolen base, batting 255. That's going to go up. All of that's going to go up. I have a feeling he's going to end the season with probably like a uh, a 270 batting average. He's probably still going to have 30 home runs, and he's probably still going to have a good amount of runs and ribs because of the team around him. And the trade deadline's coming, so they're probably going to bolster up that team even more. So Corey Seager, I feel, is going to be an immediate acquire right now. I am going to get, you know, try and give 75 cents on the dollar, but that's probably still might not get the job done. You still might have to go up like, almost to a full-blown fair trade, but I'm still going to do it because I'd rather have him on my roster than him coming up against me in the playoffs or just try, when I'm trying to make the playoffs, essentially. So go out there, acqu- acquire Corey Seager now before the heat goes up, and then he's absolutely untouchable. Yeah, Matt, great take. And, uh, and I do have a little bit to add and uh, you know tack on to there. So we are on the same page. I'm, I'm buying all the Corey Seager shares I can. It's not like the guy lost the talent. We know who Corey Seager is at 30 years old. He's a uh, you know career 289 hitter, almost 1,000 games, and you know 3,700 at-bats. Uh, we, we know who he is. And all the underlying stuff looks fantastic. The batting average is going to get to where it needs to be. Uh, you know, he's hitting the ball really hard. The exit velocity looks great. He's barreling it up. Uh, you know, not even really striking out or swinging and missing. So everything looks fantastic. I think if you can get, you know, as Matt said, 75 cents on the dollar, I, I, I might even pay 80 cents on the dollars for a guy like Corey Seager. Just go back and look at what he did last year. And we're hoping the injuries are out of the way for Corey Seager this year. We can, fingers crossed, and open prey um that you know like i said they're they're you know long gone at this point um so bye 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 on Corey seager all you can uh let's move on to his teammate actually let's talk some adolis garcia who actually did hit a home run yesterday or well two days ago as you guys are listening to this who knows maybe he hits one later today as well uh you know i would like that because i have a few shares uh you know but adolis garcia on the season just Really hasn't, uh, you know, been where we normally see him. He's hitting 218 with 14 home runs, uh, 42 RBIs, 
39 runs, 74 games played, 275 at-bats. And once again, we're talking at Dolis Garcia, outfielder of the Texas Rangers here. And I, and I feel like, you know, again, at 31 years old, we know who Adolis is. You know, he's not going to blow the world away. He's going to hit around, you know, 240, 250, a lot of power in that good Texas Rangers lineup. Um, you know, as Matt was talking earlier, guys are getting healthy. Uh, maybe they get Evan Carter back while Langford's heating up. Uh, I think there's a lot of upside, you know, for him to hit in the middle of that lineup and really get to where he needs to be. So uh, I love Adolis Garcia. Um, like I said, um, him maybe not as much as Seager, but uh, I do want to pay like 70 cents on the dollar for Garcia right now. Yeah, and I mean, I don't even think you need to pay 70 cents because he's just been so putrid, um, especially like pretty much this whole month if you really look at it. And you know what? Like I'm, I'm all about it because just for every reason you said, plus – the underlying stats look fantastic. He is hitting the ball hard on a good percent of the time. He's barreling up. He has good average exit velocity at 90.8. You know, the slug is there. And you know what? These are all signs that, hey, there's better days to come. You know, the other stuff will kind of figure itself out. Adolis Garcia is going to be just fine. And I'd rather try and get him now since, you know, with the, the outfield landscape being so ugly right now, with the Corbin Carrolls not performing, with the Acunas going down, with the Fernando Tatis and the Mookie Betts getting hurt and being out for extended amount of times, trying to acquire Julio's like a, been struggling too, Julio. Right. Like there has just been like a, a really rough season. I don't know. 2024, I feel like it's coming coming to bite us in the butt really hard this year. Everybody, everybody that you kind of expected to take a step forward or continue what they're doing kind of just like fell apart and crumbled. And it's for no good reason, honestly. But Adolis Garcia is at least showing the underlying stats that say, hey, there's there's uh, more to this iceberg than on top. You don't want to be that. I'd rather have the teams right up against it like the ty- Titanic versus me being on the other side of that. So let, let's go out there and trade for Adolis Garcia. But let's move on. Let's talk Ozzy Albies, another guy that like, honestly, I'm a little more surprised in of how he's performing because I'm a big Albies guy going into the season. He was my number one second baseman. And he started off the season with a bang. He looked great. Uh, went down for an injury for a little, little bit, and then kind of came back and just has completely teetered off and has everything we saw in the beginning of the season has kind of disappeared. You know, I'm surprised he's hitting 258. The power and such, that I could kind of see that this is kind of more a reality. Maybe he's no longer that 33 home run season kind of guy. And maybe he's more, probably more realistic of a 25, 27 home run guy, which still isn't atrocious. The stolen bases I don't think are really going to be as relevant, especially since he only had 13 last year. I think th- that kind of real reality is gone. But like outside of him, just like, you know, essentially doing a little bit more chasing, not hitting the ball in sweet spots as much and not really like, you know, getting the uh, the batting average and slug in the right position. Everything else kind of looks normal. He's never really hit the ball hard. His, his average exit velocity about 88.7, which is an elite power on the average exit velocity. You know, he's, barreling almost the same as he did last year. And he never got really great, good, hard contact. He just makes good contact with the ball. Ozzy Albies is just a good hitter. So when it comes to Ozzy Albies, I'm just going to say this. He's going to be just fine. He's on one of the best teams in baseball. The lineup itself is going to support his, both his runs and ribbies. The once he starts getting on a roll and starts getting on base more frequently, you're going to see everything start falling into place with Ozzy Albies. So I kind of want to go out there and acquire him on cheap if I can, that's the question. Can I? And you're probably still going to have to do 75 cents on the dollar as well. And I, I'm not opposed for this because, like, this is something I talk about here and there where I don't mind giving multiple players for a single player, especially when, like, one of those players I'm quasi up- upset I have to give away. But the other guy is a waiver wire pickup, the guy that's just hot or a guy that's been hot for a month that I don't truly believe in that kind of just, like, makes the deal look a lot better for them and fills a couple of their needs that kind of makes them feel okay with it. But at the same time, then, you know, I'm getting the better player in the deal because, you know, just because I'm giving like, I, I'm keeping an A plus and you're getting like a B and a, and a, and a B minus player. I ultimately have the better, the better player in the deal because then I could just go find another B minus B plus player off the waiver wires week in, week out and stream by listening to our waiver wire episodes and then getting more production out of my second base, which is also hard to come by. So I'm adding Ozzy Alves as best as I humanly can. You know, that's actually a strong, you know, take on, on trading. Actually, I, I actually did. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, so, you know, to, just to get back to some, you know, Ozzy Alves here, you know, second baseman, Atlanta Braves. Um, I'm looking at his like career average, right? So, you know, throughout his career, he averages 105 games per season with 17 home runs, 10 steals, 271 batting average. 
you know, if you prorate that out to maybe like 140 games, as Matt said, you're talking about a guy, 25 home runs, 15 steals, 270 batting average with good counting stats. Um, I, I love it. And I think he can get back to that. He's still only 27 years old. He's in the prime of his career. Uh, you know, the underlying stuff doesn't look great, but, you know, I, I think he can turn it all around in a second and then everything will get back to where it needs to be. Um, so coming up next, though, we're going to talk some Carlos Correa. And uh, I think Matt's going to open a big bottle of Haterade, but we shall see. Passion to drive and patience is the formula for winning championships. It's also to keep your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, or eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts, your number one ride or die will always have, find the exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because eBay Motors... Uh, has you burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and prices you want, it's easier to make your car an MVP by bringing home a huge win and keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions may apply. EB's, eBay's guaranteed fit is only available for U.S. customers. Are you struggling to close the deal? Business to business sales are tougher than ever, and I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps you helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive high, higher volumes, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes and which accounts you should prioritize, and show you the hidden allies you can find by, of those buyers that are the most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion membership platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data enabled to unlock conversations with people that actually matter. Right now, you could try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a free 60-day trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on to get started today. Introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. As the season unfolds, rely on our dynamic content. Get real-time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call notifications, injury actions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. Subscribe now and elevate that fantasy baseball experience by joining now and get a free two weeks upon new membership. So check us out. Links in the description below. But all right, that was a lot. Oh, I'm about to chug the rest of the Gatorade and save it for uh, Carlos Correa a little bit later in the show. Yeah, so, uh, you know, before we get over to Carlos Correa, I do want to talk some Blake Snell, right? And I think, I think it's almost like perfectly set up for Blake Snell to do his normal Blake Snell second half domination tour, right? It's almost like the perfect time for him to come back. He's making another rehab start on Friday. He, he wasn't good in his first one, but you know what? We're, we're going to give Blake Snell a little bit of a pass for that. Uh, we all know who this guy is. He, he, he always does this every year. Starts off the year really, really bad. And I think you can get Blake Snell for like nothing right now. I really don't even think you have to trade a lot Pitching is, you know, glorious right now. All of us, you know, hopefully, if you've been listening to Matt and I here, I know we've given you pretty much all the big names that have excelled from the Luis Heels uh, to, you know, everyone that's just come off the waiver wire this year and just has been dominant. We've been covering them all. I think Blake Snell, you can you can trade somebody you picked up off the waiver wire from. It's a 9-5-1 ERA for Blake Snell. Once again, he's pitching for the San Francisco Giants these days in case you forgot. Uh, six starts on the year, 9-5-1 ERA, 23 innings, 31 strikes out and a 194 whip it's definitely going to get better than that uh blake snell won the cy young last year two career cy youngs i think he's one of only two players to ever to win the cy young in both leagues he's a career 335 era guy monstrous strikeout totals the whip might wind up being a little bit higher especially him coming off the injury but i think there's a path for blake snell to be a top 10 pitcher in the second half oh dude you're you're so spot on it it's crazy because if he didn't go to a new team or they didn't rush him back, he would have got signed earlier. 
This yeah. would be a completely different conversation. The kid would be absolutely untouchable. He found something last year where last year he started off hot and then got even hotter in the second half where he had like a two, six, eight ERA for the first half. And then like a sub two for the whole second half. It was absolutely monstrous. I think that, you know, and I warned about this right as the season was started, the end of draft season. So if you're new, I'm sorry, you didn't get this advice. Blake Snell <laughs> fell way down our draft boards just because of the position that that the Giants were taking, how they were going to have him play in two weeks. They signed him two weeks prior, and Blake Snell did not have any ramp up, and then we saw him instantly hit the IL. Then we saw him come back, still be absolutely duty, and then go back on the IL. Like, Blake Snell I just has got no fair shot at the season, and you know what? Like, even though this was the best humanly possible landing spot for him in terms of, you know, pitching landing spots, you know, like what it did for Carlos Rodon and such, this was just a travesty of management of Blake Snell. So I'm not, there's no knock on his talent. It's more of just, Hey, he's had, he's just been completely mismanaged coming back. Hopefully they do the right thing. They take their time and come after all-star break and you've acquired him. You can, you'll, you'll be a happy camper. So I mean, float the worst humanly possible answer uh, um, offer out there. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, don't go out there and offer him like Jose Abreu who just got, you know, caught from the Astros, but you know, something that's like, okay, it's this waiver where waiver wire guy. And um, I we actually might have some great names coming up that, yeah. that the people can, uh, you know, shoot out there for Blake Snell. I don't know. I like all these names more than I like Blake <laughs> that, <laughs> to keep on my team. I wouldn't say more than Blake Snell, but you know, I'll keep on my team at least for versus Blake Snell, but Hey, it might get the deal done. But anyway, let, let's move on. I spent way too much time. Let's talk about Bobby Miller, Bobby Miller, Pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, he is fantastic. I love him. He just hasn't been able to stay on the field this year. Uh, it, it's really just frustrating as, you know, somebody that just like was excited for the talent to only get watch him get 18 starts. And his ERA is inflated too because of the bad start. The dude has so many good pitches. You know, Did like you say 18 we, starts? I mean, 18, innings. Starts, 18 innings. Yeah. 18 yeah, gotcha. innings. I apologize. You know, I do that sometimes. It's no, no, it's okay. I, I wasn't sure. I was that's my fault. I, I'm gonna diagnose myself. I have a <laughs> dystactula instead of uh, you know, <laughs> but anyway, so he has he has like five pitches, I believe. He has a four seamer, a yeah. sinker, a curveball, a slider, a changeup, a sweeper, and they're all super elite. Like every single one of those is is fully out there and above par with, with everything with Bobby Miller. Bobby Miller is going to be one of the best pitchers on the Dodgers for a long time. So honestly, if you can go out there and get them, he might be a little bit more pricier just based off of the fact that, you know, he has the hype that second year breakout. We all know is coming. They probably know it too. That's why they haven't dropped them. But here's the key part. Look at their team. Are they, are they struggling to keep healthy people on their team and their, their IL is loaded and then they're sitting with another guy on, on their bench that has an IL designation. This is the perfect time to take advantage of those teams. See if you can sneak Bobby Miller on to give them actual usable assets, get that person out of their IL now, and then boom, I can go in and steal right under him. See, I, I agree with obviously that I love Bobby Miller. I was, I, I was huge. I had him ranked, I think, inside my top 20 starting pitchers by the end of draft season. So, you know, anyone who knows the prospect pedigree, of course. But I think there might be some teams out there where, you know, the Bobby Miller owner might not know what they have. Because last year, even Bobby Miller wasn't great in the bigs. It was a 3 7 6 ERA, 124 innings, 119 strikeouts, and a 110 whip. You know, great for his age and, you know, first year in the bigs. But people might look at that and not realize that. As Matt said, this is a guy that has five plus pitches. I'm not talking about the results on the pitches necessarily because, you know, some of the pitches last year do not have great results in the bigs, but the pitches as far as their movement, their break, uh, just, you know, the velocity on the fastball averages 90. Uh, this this guy is just going to be really, really good. Uh, Bobby Miller, 6'5", 220, 25 years old. And I think this is another guy that's in for a big, big second half. I think even bigger than Blake Snell's. Quote me on that one. Uh, but Matt, I, 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 I think I have to pass this next guy to you if that's okay with you. Yeah, we, we could do that. But first, uh, before we finally get to Carlos Correa, uh, right after this, I promise I'm going to throw all the shade I humanly can towards him, but we'll be right back. Here on Locked On Fantasy Baseball, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team. Whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs, it's year-round. 
You know what else is year-round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, and even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. See the link in the episode description below. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Exploring my skills on prize picks this season has added an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few taps, you can transform $10 into 1000 easily. Prize picks is incredibly user-friendly. You can make selections and submit your own entries in less than 60 seconds. As the host of Locked On Fantasy, Fantasy baseball. Here are some rock solid picks. Opt for our boy Josh Lowe to have higher than 0.5 total bases in his next start. Opt for Pete Alonso to hit a home run in his next outing. Or you can opt for Bryce Tarang to steal a base in his next game. Download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, Matt, the big moment is here. I think everyone's been waiting for it. And if, you, if you're an avid listener, you know about the hater aid. If you're not, uh, Matt, Matt's bringing it. Matt's bringing the hater aid, and it's here for Carlos Correa. If you're watching on YouTube, he's stretching. He's getting ready for a couple of that. And uh, I think I think Matt's about to hit a home run here. Oh, I feel like you're just a ringleader right now, my hype man. But let's get it going. Uh, Carlos Correa here. I am not a fan. Um, not that I was never a fan. I'm just not a fan now. Um, I think this is all bolstered up by a few things. One, he's just hot, and I'll ride that wave ultimately. But two, I think this is the perfect time to sell for two reasons. One, this isn't going to last. And two, he's going to get hurt before we even see the to see the fire die out in his eyes. Because Carlos Correa is even more fragile than, than Eloy Jimenez and Alberto Montesi combined. Now, yes, you look at Carlos Correa's, you know, baseball savant page, and there's quite a few at-bats under his under his uh, belt right now at 224, where you just see red across the board. But you know what? You go back every year for last, like, I don't know, 22, 20, 21. Like, it's just like things just don't always seem to add up for him. I don't foresee this happening, even though there's absolutely no underlining stat that says otherwise. Everything looks fantastic. But again, this is the perfect time to capitalize on that. A guy you picked up for free, a guy that's 85% available, the guy that you could probably sell the absolute highest right now and say, hey, you're not, you don't have a good shortstop, or hey, you just lost your power in, in um, I don't know, Tatis or Mookie Betts. You need somebody? Yo, here's Carlos Correa. And let me get a Bobby Miller. Let me get a Garcia. Let me get an Ozzy Albies. You know, I don't think you'll get him straight up for these guys. Do not get me wrong. But at the same time, Carlos Correa is going to be one of the driving forces in that trade. So like I said, when I was talking about giving up, you know, a, a player that I genuinely don't really care about that will push to drive, push it home, Carlos Correa is the perfect person for it. I'd even give him straight up for Blake Snell because I believe in Blake Snell's uh, one health and performance over Carlos Correa. So I would trade Carlos Correa absolutely right now while the val- while the value is super high. Yeah, man, I'm actually going to chime in with you a little bit here. And I, I didn't expect to, too. And especially after I looked at the baseball savant, I thought I was going to be a little bit more positive, right? But let's look at it like this. Everything has gone right for Correa, right? And what has it equated to? A 304 batting average? And that's it. He doesn't steal bases. Uh, eight home runs isn't blowing me away at all. And the counting stats are mediocre for being on a really good twins team, right? So 
what happens when things start going wrong? Baseball is a game of, you know, hitting hitting the ball three out of ten times. You're one of the best in the league. Hitting the ball two out of ten times means you're, you're one of the worst. So there's not a lot of margin for error there. And I, I think, you know, things aren't going to stay as good as they are for Correa. Even the walk-to-strikeout ratio, it would be probably the best of his career pretty much at this point. So I, I, I'm – I'm not saying that he's not a good baseball player because he is. He's proven it before. He's been an all-star multiple times, you know, uh, World Series, um, you know, uh, you know, champion, unfortunately. But um, I just – I'm selling right now. I'm, I'm getting rid of Carlos Correa. I want him off my teams. And as Matt said, you could trade him for anybody uh, that we mentioned above, and I would pretty much be happy for that. Uh, let's talk about somebody that I'm actually kind of excited to talk about. That I don't, I don't, I know I haven't talked about him on this podcast. Maybe Matt has before, but let's talk some Matt Waldron, right? Now, Matt Waldron, if you don't know who he is, starting pitcher, San Diego Padres. Um, interesting case here. He's a knuckleballer, man, and and we haven't seen us a knuckleballer in uh, quite some time. So, uh, you know, on the year, 16 starts for Waldron, a 3-4-3 ERA, 89 innings, 84 strikeouts, with a 1-1-6 WHIP. Now, my thing is he's 27 years old, uh, doesn't have a lot of pedigree, doesn't have a lot of success in the minors, if much at all. He really only had success in his, uh, you know, age 2022 season in 2019. So I'm a seller on Waldron, honestly. I know pitching is kind of heavy right now and, and, you know, deep. But if you could add him to a trade and that gets it done and somebody doesn't realize that, you know, he's kind of doing it with smoke and mirrors. Maybe people don't know that he's, you know, a, a knuckleballer. Uh, you know, when the knuckleball works, it works. But if you know, uh, it's not really a, a predictable pitch that you can throw, um, you know, over and over again and get the same results. Uh, you know, on start to start basis, it could be really bad. Obviously, he's you know, been working it of, of late. But I'm just not buying in. It's a, a stretch of about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost about 10 starts here. But you know what? There's a lot of pitchers that have had a good 10 start run in their career. Uh, I'm selling on Walter. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, I, I'm kind of all, I'm on the same page, man. I don't trust a guy that throws a knuckleball. I, you know, I don't trust a guy that has a 90, 90 mile per hour fastball. That also doesn't produce a lot of ground balls. Yes, he doesn't give a lot of hard, give up a lot of hard hits, but that's also specifically due to his knuckleball. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that just like scream like, "Hey, this is not sustainable right now." And so, like, let's be on the other side of it and sell while it's hot. So, I like what you're saying. Everything in your take, Dom, and I don't think I need to keep going. I kind of just more of reinforced it with uh, with that. But let's keep going here. Let's talk Jake Irving of the um, Washington Nationals. You know. Another guy that that is an interesting one. I, I we we get tr- like comments and trade like questions like, "Hey, should I trade for Jake Irving?" Actually, I'm on the other side of that. I'm trading away Jake Irving. He's somebody that I genuinely don't believe in either. Uh, you know, he's a guy that doesn't have a fast uh, a good fastball either. It's 90 miles per hour. He also doesn't get a lot of chase. He doesn't create a lot of whiffs. He does not get a lot of Ks. He gives up a lot of barreling and he gives up hard contact. The one good thing he does is he doesn't walk a lot of guys and he produces a lot of ground balls. Now, when it comes to that, right, but when you're giving up, when you're creating a lot of ground balls, but you're giving up a lot of hard contact, right, and your average exit velocity is at 90 miles per hour, there is a serious path for things to just go completely left and explode his ERA. Even his ex-ERA is a 372. I wouldn't be surprised that his ERA right now that's at, what, 313, he doesn't finish with like a 4 ERA or like a 395. And he just has like a bad month or two or the rest of the season at that point where it just everything kind of falls apart for me. There is not enough stuff behind him that tells me this is sustainable. The the essentially the formula that he's using is going to be short lived. And I I'd rather sell him while his value is super high and go for it. But the thing is, I don't know how much you're going to get for him just based off the fact that he's only 57% owned. So he's one of those guys that you're sneaking into kind of, Hey, I'll give you Jake Irving on top of this guy that like, I'm kind of upset. I got to trade, but it gets the deal done. And you're walking away with that a plus player while trading a B plus and a C player. So Jake Irving is a perfect finish the deal kind of job guy. 
Yeah, Matt, great take. I'm just going to add that, you know, Jake Irving uh, has never been successful before. Uh, you know, 20 innings in 2018, he was good. But other than that, no prospect pedigree, no minor league track record. Uh, Matt, great take. I'm just going to keep things pushing. Uh, let's talk Kyle Gibson, right? Kyle Gibson is just another guy. We, we know who he is. Sometimes, you, you know, you, uh, you know, Occam, Occam's razor is what is what makes sense, what the most obvious thing is it is, right? So Kyle Gibson, we know who he is. Uh, he's a mediocre pitcher, right? Even in a, a day and age where, you know, pitching's dominant, he's still pitching to, a, you know, a mid-threes ERA, uh, you know, uh, not even a K per nine. The, the whip is at a one one nine. Uh, I'm not huge on Kyle Gibson. You know, if, if you don't remember, uh, you know, he's back uh, over with the St. Louis Cardinals now after pitching for Baltimore last year, Philly. This guy's uh, played for pretty much every team in the league. Uh, um, but, you know, and he actually gets the Braves as we're looking at this, um, you know, and uh, I'll say this. He's only 39% owned with another guy that's not, you know, out there in, uh, you know, a massive amount of leagues, but we like to make sure, you know, our deep league players are getting the coverage as well. So, you know, um, and don't pick them up. Don't, if you're tempted to pick Kyle Gibson up, I'm not picking him up either. I mean, I, I'll, I'll start him in like a pinch, but again, yeah, he's a, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, it, and in a deeper league, he is a fair trade asset too. So like we're talking, this is more of like a, like a 12 ish man where like everybody's just scraping the barrel or like a 14 man. That's where like Kyle Gibson comes into play where they're even considering him. And honestly that those points too, those leagues are actually probably considering starting him. So, you know, Kyle Gibson does have some value in some places is why he's on this. But I want to sneak in this last guy before we get out of here since we had so many ads today. Um, Jameer, Jameer Candelario. Um, honestly, I don't understand the hype other than the fact that he went to Great American Hitter Park. He had an okay season last year, right? He had 22 home runs. He had eight stolen bases. He had 70, 77 runs and, you know, just really was whatever, right? Comes on the Reds and is just like, meh. I mean, everything that everything that he did on that team, he's now doing on this team in terms of advanced stats, except he's not producing in the in the in in the stat cast. Essentially, he's not producing on the board. So with Candelario, I'm just like, whatever with him. He has a lot of hype and a lot of value right now. And he's performing, performing to a to a great month with nine home runs. Way I'm going to handle it is I'm going to sell on this before he starts doing exactly what I expect him to do and say, peace out and let him just blow up somebody else's team because you've already had the best of Candelario. Yeah, Matt, great take on Candelario there. I'll just add nothing in the underlying stats. Makes me think he is going to turn uh, – well, he, he he's pitting good right now. That's why we're selling high because he's been on a tear. But Nine home runs stuff, this month. Yeah, the, the underlying stuff looks really bad, so I think he's going to fall off a cliff uh, sooner or later. Uh, but, guys, real quick, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch over to Locked On Fantasy Sports uh, today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Fantasy Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And with that being said, guys, we are headed out of here until tomorrow. Um, see you. Peace.